I, I think the healthcare system is facing numerous challenges. Um, if you look at long-term disease, which is 80% of my work as a GP, it's going up. Whether you talk about cancer, if you talk about stress, anxiety, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, all these things are going up and up and up. So the current health system is not containing the problems that we're having to solve, nor, should I add, can it afford to do so. Everlastingly, there's a call for more doctors, more nurses, more hospitals. There's a limit to how much we can either afford and there's a limit to the number of doctors or nurses that are out there to be employed. So our health system at the moment is under great strain and that's why we need to have an integrated approach. I think it's a very important time for integrated medicine because integrated medicine can solve so many of these problems. Uh, I mean, look at, for instance, at antibiotic resistance. Um, we are now having people dying for want of an effective antibiotic and yet we know that those conventional practitioners that practice complementary medicine use antibiotics 25% less than their colleagues. That's a really important figure. Look for instance at overuse of opiates for long-term pain control. It's the commonest cause of death of young people in America today. These are issues that are crucial and urgent and this is why integrated medicine is required to stop that overuse of antibiotics, to stop those people dying from the antibiotics no longer being effective and to stop people being on these painkillers uh, and other medicines. Uh, we're talking about somewhere between 10 and 20 percent of our population to stop them being on those medications and offer them something different which is what integrated medicine can do. Social prescribing is very much part of integrated medicine because I think integrated medicine is conventional, it's complementary, it's lifestyle uh, and it's traditional. So it's merging all these things, what the Prince of Wales calls the best of all worlds. Um, and social prescription is really looking at how we can use those resources in our communities to improve health. Those resources that are there already, but we're not using as effectively as we might. So what it's doing is it's taking someone who often has lost their self-esteem, lost their self-confidence, can't see their way forward, and giving them something that's not a drug or a procedure. Perhaps it's joining a singing group or a gardening group, or perhaps it's benefits advice or helping them to get a job. What we really need is something that fits their life. Um, as they see it, their hopes, their beliefs, their needs uh, and their challenges and their capacity. You know, what, what are the things that can help them get to that first step which makes them in charge of their own destiny, which gives their life significance? And we know that these are the very most important things that stop us being ill and make us live longer. I think there's pretty good evidence for a lot of uh, complementary medicine, but you know, let's, uh, let's have a, a level playing field. For instance, look at conventional medicine. For many of my patients over 70 or 80, I'm giving them eight or nine possible different medications quite often. And though we know the evidence for each individual one, often in a younger person with one disease, there's actually very little evidence for the combinations that most of us are giving in conventional medicine. And not only uh, is the an issue of the comparative uh, validity of the research, there's also the issue of whether we can do the research. Because the National Health Service in this country spent 0% of its research budget on complementary medicine over the last year or two. So it's a little bit um, unfair to suddenly say to complementary medicine, where's the evidence, when we're not prepared to finance the evidence that we need. We know that conventional medicine has often been very tribal with uh, the different branches of medicine competing and often challenging each other. Um, sadly, I see that to some extent within complementary medicine. And of course, it's very unhelpful for patients when they get a different message from one practitioner and a, and a different one from another. Uh, they get that between the conventional and the complementary all too often. But if two complementary practitioners aren't agreeing, that makes it even more difficult. Uh, and that's precisely why the College of Medicine is now bringing together the leaders of the complementary modalities to say we need to have a common message and we need to be able to tell people when 
and where they need to access the different forms of complementary medicine and what the evidence is and also how they can know that the practitioner they're seeing is properly qualified and properly trained. Uh, if we can do that, I believe we can, if you like, create a common front of complementary and integrative medicine that will enable patients to access it in a way that's more helpful to them and give it a better image uh, and a better profile than it has at present. Of course, as you know, a recent study came out with the WHO looking at uh, integrated medicine throughout the world. Um, rather sadly, Europe came rather low compared to a number of other countries and sadder still, the UK came lowest of all uh, in terms of the degree to which uh, complementary and integrated medicine is either supported or acknowledged by government or the extent to which research is actually being funded. Um, and I think this is something which we've got to uh, change in this country because um, it's very, uh, it's one thing to say that complementary medicine hasn't got enough evidence. It's another to say that we're going to turn our back on it altogether. And I think that if you look at the media, if you look at government, if you look at conventional medicine, that's where it stands today. So I hope this conference will signify the changing of the tide. Um, not only because uh, of all these issues that conventional medicine is failing to contain, like long-term disease, but also because I'm seeing amongst my younger colleagues, my younger conventional doctor colleagues, a different attitude altogether. They don't understand this either-or bit between complementary and conventional. They just want something that works for their patients. They're pragmatists. Uh, and if that works, then they're happy. They're not going to say, but my tribe is conventional medicine or my tribe is acupuncture. They say, well, let's take anything that works. And I think that that is a, a tide of hope, open-mindedness, uh, patient-centeredness, you could say. And, and I think that is the wind upon which uh, integrated health and care will now flourish. What this conference is doing is bringing together some of the best talents in the world uh, and with some very interesting and urgent themes. But what I think it needs to achieve is not only to appreciate that there is now a very large research base for integrated health and care, but to actually achieve change within our health systems and our communities. So it may be slightly different from the European conferences that have preceded it. That's to say we will be looking at implementation, how you actually do create an integrated health system, how you influence both the media and the political system and the health system so that patients have the choice of both. Uh, and that I hope will be where this conference will end because in this country, as I've explained already, we really do need a change of attitude which is far more open-minded on the behalf of the uh, conventional establishment. Um, the conference is not just about the presentations, the discussions and the debates. It's also something rather human, which fits with the integrated message. It's something about us meeting each other, changing ideas, but bonding, uh, supporting each other. Um, and perhaps the beginning of a revolution, a revolution that will emanate here from London, throughout the UK, perhaps through Europe, perhaps through the world. And maybe this is the beginning of that new dawn that many of us in integrated health and care have wanted for a very long time.